Hey everybody, Jeremy here, and today I want to tell you about something that I found in my parents' home. It happened a few days ago. Uh, one of my little brothers was running around with the little camera, you know, and he was just like taking pictures and taking pictures and stuff. And like little kids do, eventually they decided, hey, there's something more interesting going on, so I'm going to put down my toy camera and go do that instead. And I was just sitting there in the kitchen, uh, not really paying them too much attention, but I was going to walk past where he set the camera down anyway. And I just decided, like, oh, I wonder what kind of toy this is. So I go over, and I pick it up, and then I think, it's not a toy. It's not a toy at all. In fact, it was this. This is the Canon TX. This is a camera that was made in the 1970s and it was used uh, in a lot of cases to teach students about photography. This camera is all metal and it's all manual. You know, there's really no electronic thing in it. I mean there is a light meter that requires a battery but you know everything else in the camera does not need a battery. This is old school tech. This is the type of thing that people learned how to properly expose photos and properly take photos on. And I think that's something that a lot of us take for granted these days because with you know just about everything going digital and it being harder and harder to find places that develop film, old dinosaurs like this, you know, seemingly really don't have a place these days. But I was completely taken by this camera because as I said earlier I love the all metal made in Japan type things because I guess growing up in my generation you know I was born in 1986 we didn't have a lot of solid metal hard heavy toys or anything cars weren't being made from that stuff anymore you know your little toy trucks were made of plastic so whenever I can get a hold of some stuff that feels like old world tech I was just amazed and when I saw this camera I started reading up about it I started looking up things about it and surprisingly it seems that everything on this camera still works at least mechanically I've put a roll of film through it once I get it back I'll be able to know like oh was well, the lens messed up or or is there something else wrong with the camera does it even take pictures at all but I'm really excited and curious as to how that's going to turn out and I think that I'm going to have myself a heck of a time going out and just taking pictures with this thing where everything that you do will determine whether or not that photo is going to come out good or bad. No auto anything. So just to show you a little closer around the camera, I'm going to swish this thing around and we're going to get into this a little more in depth. Alright, so this is the close-up of the Canon TX SLR camera that was made in Japan starting from 1974. So this camera is around 40 years old or so. And the great thing about these cameras, great thing that I love about these old cameras, as I mentioned earlier, is that they're all freaking metal. You know, they're heavy they don't feel like if you squeeze it too hard am I gonna break something no 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 it's not gonna happen and these cameras were used uh, a lot to really teach people about photography and really teach them about the relationship between shutter speeds and apertures and ISO back in the day known as ASA and how all those things work together to getting a properly exposed photo something that you know, we really don't have to worry too much about today because since everything is digital and everything is automatic, so you can just put it in aperture priority mode and you don't have to worry about your shutter speed or you put it in shutter priority mode and you don't have to worry about your aperture. All that stuff gets adjusted for you as when back in the day you had to do all that yourself assisted by a built-in light meter which I can't show you right now but I will get a little bit closer into that uh, later on so for this camera being so old I think it is in really good shape you know there's a little bit of, of dust like in between the um, 
film advance lever and the shutter and everything, but that can just be wiped off if you're willing, willing to, you know, just get down there a little bit. But even like on the bottom and along the sides, there's no major scuffs or anything. I'm just amazed how this camera stayed in such good condition after all these years. That's really something that you won't hear too much about. Now, like I said earlier, I don't really know the condition of this lens. I would imagine it could use some cleaning, but um, we will see later about that once I get the pictures back. Now, this over here, this is a battery compartment. The camera itself is not battery powered, but the light meter inside of the camera is, and the light meter uh, helps you determine whether or not your pictures are going to be overexposed or underexposed. It's just a little lever that goes up and down and there's a circle there too so you have to try to get that meter in between that circle in order to get a properly exposed photo. And uh, these things I believe originally came with mercury batteries which of course mercury is a no-no nowadays because it'll freaking kill you. So uh, what I was able to do was use a 1.4 volt uh, 675 hearing aid battery and it's smaller than the battery that came in this camera but it works and the light meter works and I think that's really awesome. So uh, let me go over some of the mechanics of this camera in case you've never seen an old camera like this before. Just really just curious about how they used to work. So one of the first things over here you'll see the words or the letters ASA. Now that was back in the day. Right now in these days it's, re it's referred to as ISO and on our digital cameras we can change the ISO whenever we darn well please. We see that our pictures are a little bit too dark we raise the ISO to make the image brighter. We see that it's too bright we lower the ISO to try to make it a little bit darker and at the same time it affects the shutter speed either increasing it or decreasing it accordingly now back in the day that was known as ASA and it refers to the film that you put in the back of the camera so whatever film you got if you got ISO 8400 film you had to set it as 400 because if you didn't you screw up the light meter readings and your photos won't come out good so it's at 400 now so if I wanted to change it if I had like ISO 800 film I would have to pull this up and turn it to 800 and then that will tell the light meter you're working with uh, ISO 800 film right now so that is how you're gonna uh, read the light and determine the the exposure of the photos and also on these dials here you see these numbers and these numbers indicate the shutter speed so right now my shutter speed is set at 1 60th of a second and it can go all the way up to 1 500th of a second now, it may not seem all that fast especially these days where you know you can have like 1 ten thousandth of a second you know in really bright light you know staring at the sun or something like that you know but that's how high this particular camera got up to and this right here is the film advance lever which you would have to cock back every time you want to take a new photo so you cock it back like an old revolver and you hit the shutter and that's how fast it was and you can probably see it through the viewfinder All right check it out see how fast that was if you want to just slow it down so you can see the shutter better we'll just bring it all the way down almost all the way down it's a fourth of a second and if we bring it all the way down to one second and that's the way these things worked and over up here on the lens is where you would adjust the aperture see if we can bring that a little bit closer and see if it'll focus will it focus uh, probably not so up here is where you would adjust the aperture um, and you would do that by turning this lever here and while you're doing this the light meter once you know I show it to you it's moving it's moving with this because it's taking into account the light conditions in the room it's going through 
going through the lens and hitting the light meter and it's determining the exposure of whatever the camera is is pointed at and every time I turn the aperture is taking into consideration the aperture and it's taking into consideration the shutter speed in order to determine whether or not this photo is going to look good or not and you know what the aperture is when you change that let's see the aperture right now is let's make it very noticeable so let's put it like at f uh, 16 which means that when I press this shutter button the shutter or the uh, aperture you know it's going to just go like this small like a little pinhole from the lens now with these with this particular camera you can't uh, see it in real time as you turn it but this is a depth of field preview lever so when I do like that you see that is how that is how much light the camera will let into it if I were to take a picture with the aperture like that so it's like this and it will go down that small and if I were to change that so it can be wide open and I believe it starts at f uh, what's that 1.6 it's wide open so if I press this nothing happens but if I move it over one to like f 2.0 you can see it kinda coming down and the more that I turn it the less light is allowed to get in cameras still work like that now but you know that's just how the lens works like that on this particular camera so another thing here is well how do you even get the film in here well that's where this comes in right here what you do is you would uh, open that up lift this up pull it a little bit and then the back will come off and this is where you will put your film canister right here um, this is the shutter which you're never supposed to touch and over here is where you would put in the uh, film now one thing about this is I don't think this back cover is original to this camera I do believe it was replaced because you see it has like Shutton Camera Company in Chicago, Illinois, so uh, kind of sucks that the whole thing is not original, but you know most of it is, or at least I think it is. It's still cool nonetheless. Alright, so you put your film in here, and I actually have a roll of oh, not the camera. <laughs> I actually have a roll of ruined film this is actually the film that was in this camera and uh, you know it of course is ruined now because when the film is all out like this it cannot expose it to light because it will ruin it so in order to get this inside you just basically put that in here take this lever and bring it down then you would take this over to this side and there's like a little arrow with a little opening I'm not too sure if you can see that that you're supposed to put the beginning of this film into and I'm trying to do this while keeping it in the frame and I rewound and wound this film time and time again so it's it's curling at the ends I'll try to do it alright got it in there okay so now that is in there like that what you're supposed to do now is uh, hit the lever, hit the shutter, then close this thing back up, and then up at the top here, you can see right there how there's an S right there. So basically, you have to get it to the zero, and you do that by advancing it a couple more times. Now, when I turn this lever, this here is also going to move because it'll indicate that uh, the film is properly loaded so let's turn it once shutter turn it twice okay and then you'll see that this is now at zero so when I take another picture it moved over to one and take another picture over to two and as much as I do that you know until it's all done 
And then when you were done taking all of the pictures that you needed to take, you would flip it over on the bottom. You would press this button here once and then you would lift this and you would turn it clockwise to rewind the film. You're not supposed to open this up before it's completely in the canister, but since the film is ruined anyway, and I want to show you, I'm going to show you exactly what happens. So, you would just turn this clockwise, and you see it's rewinding, and it's going back into the canister, back into the canister. And then you would just keep going until it's completely in the canister, and then you would take it off somewhere to uh, get developed. But of course, this film will never be developed it's dead yeah so <laughs> if it sounds complicated and you know whatever you know it's it seems so at first but it's really not you know once you get really used to it but right now I want to show you the light meter in this camera and how that determines exposure and everything so that's really neat so let me show you that now okay so this is the inside of the viewfinder where the light meter is now do you see that little needle that's sticking off to the side that is reacting to the light that's in this room right now and if I were to take my hand and put it over the lens you see how that needle is going down because it's getting darker and now it's going back up because it's getting lighter and I'll do that again see that and the idea is to get that needle right directly across the middle of that little circle. Now that little circle is controlled with the aperture ring. So as I turn that ring, you see how that's going down like that? And then when I change the shutter speed, that's controlling that needle. So ideally, if there was a picture that I wanted to take right now, I would have to try to get it right there in the middle. And then once I got it in the middle, you know, I would cock that lever back. Oh, you see that right there? That ain't good. See a little red right there? It's telling us that, yeah there's something that's not right so you have to adjust your settings accordingly I'm trying to do this through the camera there we go so what I would do now is try to change I'm probably not going to be able to get it directly in the middle because I have this pointed at the at the floor hmm yeah, I'm not going to be able to get it because I can't really tilt the camera and stuff to get the proper amount of light in there. But basically, you do all of the adjusting that you need to try to get that in the middle as much as you can. And then once you're done, you will take the photo. And that's really how the light meter works. And without that, you wouldn't really have a really good way to determine whether or not your photo is going to come out overexposed or underexposed. We don't have to worry about that now because we get live previews and the like, but this is what they had to deal with back in the day. That little archaic needle can determine whether or not people can see your baby pictures. And one of the other things about this camera, one of the last things is that you can take the lens off and the assortment of lenses that you could put on this, especially nowadays with these lenses from back in the day, you can find like super cheap. So basically, you'll just turn that and it will just come right off, you know, and that mirror, of course, is a, looks a little dusty, like it needs to be cleaned or whatever, you know, but you would just take that off, slap another lens on there, and you know, kind of like how our cameras are now, you know, so interchangeable lenses ain't nothing new. And you would just line up that red with this red, and then once you do that, you just turn it, and then that's it. And uh, yeah, oh yeah, one more thing, one of the most important thing, this is the focus ring. So you would just look through the viewfinder, there's nothing right there that I can focus on. And I cannot try to focus on my finger because I only have two hands, but you would just have in focus You twist this until you're able to get what you want in focus. And there's a little 
small little circle that you see when you look through the viewfinder. I don't know what the proper name of it is, but it kind of magnifies just a little bit um, whatever it's pointed at. And then that will help you to get a better understanding of what you're trying to focus on is actually in focus. And I believe that, you know, it's not the only way focus was done with these old cameras, but that is one of the ways. And up here, I believe this is a hot shoe, so if you wanted to put like a flash up there, you could. Uh, no electronic viewfinder. No, no, no. So yeah, I hope that you uh, enjoyed this look of mine through a memory that I never even had of the uh, Canon TX SLR camera from the 1970s that I think has just been a joy that I've been able to find this at my parents house and it's actually inspired me to buy a uh, Pentax K1000 of my own you know just so I can have that iconic uh, iconic camera from back in the day so many people swear by it and still use it and you know, I just want one for myself. I want to throw some black and white film in there. I want to shoot with the film. You know, and I'm not going to switch over and start doing this all the time and say bye bye digital camera. No, because I took pictures with my digital camera today. You know, the digital to me, that's still what I prefer. You know, the quickness of it all. You know, I just need to, I need to get that really quick. I need to get that really quick. You know, you can't do all that and focus and then switch in. You know, it, it, in a lot of occasions, digital is better in many ways, but there is still a great appreciation for the old ways. And there's still an aesthetic and a style that film can give you that, you know, you just can't necessarily get with digital. You know, it's just, it's just one of those things. You know how a record player sounds? You can try to simulate that, you know, using technology, but... Ain't nothing quite like the original. And I think that's why some people are still really, really heavily into film. You know, they just love shooting with film. It's like opening up presents on Christmas morning. You're, you know, with your pictures. You don't know what you're going to get. And when you see them, it's like, oh man, it's got a little bit of grain in it. But that's okay because that's cool. And I hope to experience that for myself as well. So... Thank you, garage sale person who sold this to my parents. Thank you for my parents for um, not throwing this away. Thank you, Fates, for letting me find it. And, yeah, if you guys go out to a Goodwill or something and you find one of these cameras and it's super cheap, you know, just grab it, you know. Don't let these things go away. They don't make them like this no more. And there's always going to be a place for them. They're too special to... They're too special to just forget about. They're not junk. Don't throw them away. At least try to find them a good home. Someone out there will appreciate it. So until next time, I'm Jeremy. I'll see you later.